So in the previous episode I told you that our front-end form isn't perfect just yet because uh, everyone could add actors right here. And we of course don't want that because we want, let's just say, only registered and logged in users to be able to add something to our site. We don't want everybody just add, adding stuff to our site. So in this episode, we are going to take a look at the users plugin and uh, we are going to protect this form so that the only registered and logged in users can access this form and enter data into our database. First of all, let's just install the users plugin. So we go to settings, updates and plugins and install plugins. Of course, uh, you could make users plugin uh, yourself if you need something very specific, but uh, the October actually already has a users plugin. It doesn't come out of the box with October, but uh, it is made by the same guys that made the October. So it works well, we very well with October. So we just write user. And as you can see, you got this user front end user man management. And now, if, as you can see, we have this menu option right here, users, where we will list all of our users once they're uh, registered. And also if we go to settings, you have some uh, user settings right here. So this plugin comes with a few options. So you have the sign in, so you can throttle attempts. Uh, you can choose the login attribute. Is it going to be email or username? For the registration, you can allow user registration or disallow it. Uh, you also have this activation option. So the user m might you may want to make the users activate their account via email or you can choose that only administrators can activate the accounts and also you got these notifications where you can uh, customize your email templates so you can customize mail templates by selecting mail mail templates from the settings menu Okay, so we are going to leave everything as it is. Uh, the registration is going to be automatic. We are not going to be sending any emails, but you can change these options uh, as you see fit. So I'm just going to uh, save this, or although I didn't have to. And now we have our users plugin set up. It's a good idea when installing a new plugin to check if that plugin has some documentation. And as you can see right here, the user plugin actually has some documentation and it also gives you uh, some functions that you can use in, in your templates. We are going to be using those functions today. Now, important thing here is uh, that you understand that the users, you can work with users only if you have sessions enabled. So if we go to our site and go to CMS, and let's say we just click on this page. Uh, if we go right here to components and now we have user components, you have three of them. So you have user management form account, you have reset password uh, component and you have the session component. So on any page that you put the session component there, uh, the user plugin will actually work. So for example, if you wanna check uh, logged in users, so to check if the user is logged in on some page, you would have to put that session component on that page like this. And now if you click on this, you can allow users uh, all or just users or just guests. So uh, this is all well and good. And if you save this, now the session is going to be working on the add actress page. But this is not exactly what we want. We can check out that page right here. So if we go to themes, Olympus, pages and add actors, as you can see, we have this session security equals all. So we are going to allow 
all of the users to use this page. But this is not very good practice because in most cases you don't want the session to be available on only one page or only few pages. You want the session to be available everywhere. So to do that, uh, I can just copy this out and then we go to our layouts and go to our default layout and then below the description we are going to put the session. So since this is loaded on every page, now we have session available to us on all of the pages. And if you want to override it, then you can go to something like add actors and change this security right here, which we are going to do a little bit later. Okay, so now we got our session set up. Next thing I want to do, I want to create our login forms, registration forms, and let's just create a user and see how we can protect this page uh, so it would be available to only registered and logged in users. So first of all, let's create our login page. It's going to use the default layout. And now we can go to components and add this user management form. If we fork that code, we can see some interesting things right here. So it says if user is not logged in, then display this sign in form and register form. Else, so if the user is logged in, check the activation uh, display the update form, so the form, uh, like my profile form, where the user can change its uh, full name, uh, email address, password and so on, and also display the deactivation link, so if the user wants to deactivate it, uh, his account or hers account, then he can use that activation link, deactivation link. Now if we save this, go to October October login. Now, as you can see on this page, we have the sign in form and register form. All of this other stuff is not displaying right now because uh, the user is currently not uh, registered or logged in into our site. So we can create a new user. at example.com and now we register our user and as you can see the user is registered and it puts him directly on this page so we are still on the login page but the user uh, the component is currently showing the profile page so when when i explained uh, this to you so now the user is logged in so display this activation check and then the update form so this is the update form for our user and uh, the activate link so we have this deactivation account so you can deactivate your account if you want you can change the password you can change your full name and that's it so now we have this settled, let's just see how, how would we uh, sign out our user. So let's go to our theme, so Olympus uh, Partials header. In the header we have our links, so our main menu right here. So we are, uh, only have home and movies. Let's just create a few more links. So uh, first of all, I'm going to create a login link. Then I'm going to create add actors link. Add actors. And now we want to create our sign out link. So how do we do that? Well, if you check out the documentation, you have this link right here. So signing out, the session component allows the user to sign out of their session. So we are just going to copy this, paste it right here. And now we have on logout data request and you have this redirect uh, 
option that you can set up. So I'm going to uh, tell it to redirect to home page. So when someone clicks sign out, it's going to redirect them to the home page. If we save this, go to our page. Now we have add actors, login and sign out. Now if I click sign out, I get logged out out of this, uh, well, our website or our application. So as you can see, we have this login link right here, but we are not logged in and uh, we have the sign out link. So what to do with that? We don't want to have a sign out link if we are not actually signed in. So to do that, uh, you can check out the documentation again. And as you can see, you have this function if user. So this means if user is logged in, then do something else, do something else. So we can just say if user is logged in, then uh, display the sign out link. Okay, so now we save this. If we refresh the page, actually this page, now we shouldn't have the sign out link because we are not logged in. Okay, now we log in. We sign in and now we are on our profile page and you have this sign out link right here. Okay, now we don't want this to be logged in because we are already logged in. So we can rename uh, that. So if the user is logged in, then that uh, page wouldn't, called, wouldn't be called login, but it would be called something like my profile. So So what I, what I said right here, so if the user is not logged in, then uh, display login, else display my profile. So let's just check this out. So as you can see, now this page is called, actually this link is called my profile. One thing I forgot to mention, if we go to our login page, so we have this account, uh, the account has a, a few options. So it has this redirect to option, uh, which is going to redirect the user to the page when uh, the user logs in or registers. So you can set this to be something else, not the profile page. So right now it's not redirect, redirect, re redirect. <laughs> Right now, it is not redirect, re <laughs> come on, redirecting anywhere. So uh, it stays on the login page and the login page displays the profile page. Okay, so, but if you want it, uh, you can redirect it to the home page, to the uh, genres page, contact page, whatever you want. So keep that in mind. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Also, one more thing I want to mention. So you can uh, split this code onto different pages. So for example, if you wanted to have a different uh, register page that is not the login page, you, could, you would just create a register page and then copy this and put it on that page. Of course, you would also have to put if not user. So if the user is not logged in, then display the register form. Also, you can create a profile form if you want it. And you can take this code and uh, just put that uh, code on the profile page that you created. Also, one more thing. So as you can see, these are the partials that are coming from the user plugin. You can change those partials as you like. So if you go to plugins, so plugins, uh, RainLab, user components account in the account folder you have all of those partials so you have this activation check so this is uh, that partial then you have uh, the update so this is the update form if you want to change it you can change it but not here you would copy this code and put it on your page. So don't change anything in the actual plugin because once the plugin is updated, all of that, uh, uh, all of this code would be changed 
to its default values. So you would have to copy this code and put it on your profile page. For example, if you wanted to change uh, this HTML output. And also what do we have uh, else? So we have the deactivate link. So this is it. And you can change that code also if you need to. Okay. Uh, now that we got that settled, let's protect our Ad Actors page. So there are two ways that we can protect Ad Actors page or for that matter any other page. So the first way would be if we just go to Ad Actors and we have this actor form component right here. So we can just do So what I said right here, display this component if the user is logged in, else display this message, sorry, you have to be logged in. So this is the first way that you would do that. If we save it, uh, go to our site. As you can see, I'm currently logged in, so I'm going to sign out. And if I go to add actors, now we just get, uh, sorry, you have to be logged in. Of course, if I log in, and sign in to our website. Now, if I go to add actors, I get the actor form. Okay, so this is the first way. You can do it like this if you want, but for me, the better way would just be doing this. So I'm just going to delete all of this, right? Save it. You can go right here and go to add actors. And as you can see, I have the session right here. So I'm just going to set that session to allow only users and uh, you have this redirect to. So uh, if someone comes to that page and is not logged in, then redirect that user somewhere else. So for me, at least, uh, it would be a logical to redirect the user to the login form. So I'm just going to redirect it to login. And that's it. We save this. Let's just check this out. So if I go to add actors, I can access this page. But if I sign out and click add actors, it will automatically redirect me to the login page where I can log in. And as you can see, uh, October already knows on which page you want to go. So I logged in and automatically it uh, redirected me to the Ad Actors page because that's the page that I want to be on. So this is the way that you would use the user plugin. You also have user plus plugin, which just adds some more fields uh, to, to your users. So you can install that for yourselves if you want. Remember everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel and the content I put out, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to ask me questions, you can do that on Twitter or on Facebook or in the comments below uh, this video. Thank you guys for watching this episode and I will see you in the next one.